Now, whether you want to hug them or slug them, grown men who cry at the drop of a hat have become part of our modern American story. And tonight, we remember one in particular. And now, are free to savor the triumph and to share their stories for years to come. In that spirit, chasing the American dream. Shot at the American dream, like I did. <laughs> yes, John Boehner crying is as much a Washington tradition as the Cherry Blossom Festival. And the former House Speaker, ostensibly a Republican, was back in town to honor his old pal Nancy and remind us of the days when it really was only a uniparty. You've been incredibly effective as the leader of your caucus. You know, the younger generation today has a saying, game recognizes game. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, no other Speaker of the House in the modern era, era Republican or Democrat, has wielded, wielded the gavel with such authority or with such consistent results. Well, let's just say you're one tough cookie. My girls told me, tell the speaker how much we admire her. So if you couldn't tell my girls are Democrats. Oh, oh, apple doesn't fall far from the tree. The waterworks never fail us. Joining us now, American Majority CEO, Ned Ryan. Ned, you know what I think? How did we even survive that? I mean, during his tenure, we got rid of Eric Cantor, right? And right. like, there are a number of establishment types that just decided to go away. But that speech was pretty good summation of the GOP's failures to stand up for the working people, was it not? Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> the easiest explanation for that embarrassing episode is maybe he's smoking too much of the product he's pushing as a marijuana lobbyist. But you're right, Laura. I mean, that incident was a summation of decades of failed Republican leadership, craven leadership that would much rather grovel at the feet of their political enemies instead of stand up and fight uh, for the American working class. But Boehner really is representative of a lot of Republicans in D.C. who come, want to have a good career in D.C., have, a, have great experiences, maybe be speaker, then go be a lobbyist, make a lot of money and move on. Democrats, on the other hand, they're religious zealots. Political power is their religion. They come to D.C. to actually gain political power, to crush their enemies, and then implement their freakish, un-American vision for this country. Uh, and, that, and that's what they're doing. And instead, we have careers like Boehner. We're always going to lose in that situation, Laura. And it'd be nice if we started to get more Republicans in D.C. who actually believed in something, who believed that it was worth fighting to restore the republic, destroy the administrative state, and stand up to Democrats and the un-American left and say, no, we're not going to concede anything to you. We're actually going to fight. And it is pretty amazing what we have gone through. And, and, you know, Trump really highlighted how bad Republican leadership, if you can even call it leadership, has been for decades inside the party. And it'd be really nice if we saw a lot more America First leaders standing up, not only in Congress, but in other offices around the country. And I'm so glad you mentioned uh, the Boehner move to lobby on behalf of marijuana companies. Uh, in, in he you know came out against marijuana, of course, when he actually had to be held accountable <laughs> for his vote when he right. was in office. Then they dangle some uh, moolah in front of him. And suddenly he's like, well, I see the benefit of, uh, you know, this is a lot of benefits, this medical marijuana. I mean, that also right. tells the story of D.C., regardless of what's happening to the kids, regardless of the carnage out there. It, he's just going to go for the money. Yeah, and, and that's sadly a lot of Republicans. They do their time in office, and then they move on down to K Street, and then they start getting up the big, getting the big lobbying contracts. And that's really, you know, their principle is, is about the green. It's not about this country. It's about how much money can they make afterwards. And to do that, to be able to do that, they have to, in some ways, I think, be controlled opposition if they're going to get the sweet K Street lobbying gig. And you see a lot of Republicans falling for that and, and, and not doing what they were sent to do, Laura, and actually be representatives of the American people and fight for their priorities. Cut spending, Ned. They need to cut spending in order to get this economy back on track. That's right. They have to do it. And of course, it's not rocket know, science. No, it's, it's not that difficult. Reagan understood how to do that. All right, Ned, great That's to right. see you as always. Thanks for keeping your eyes dry during our convo. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.